going through my comments here from the video where we left on this trip and I was sliding the fifth wheel and the fifth wheel pins wouldn't go in and so many people are saying, why don't you lube those pins? Why don't you put some lube on those fifth wheel pins? I should have explained it in the video, I guess. It's not that they don't slide. They slide super easy. They don't need to be lubed. It's fine. It's that I have to get them lined up with the teeth properly. And they have to be just lined up just right. Otherwise, they don't go in all the way. That's why I rock the truck back and forth and then it slips in. Sometimes it takes a little bit of effort, but... Yeah, thank you for the advice. You're right, I could lube them, but it wouldn't help them slide any easier. It would have just been a waste of grease because they, they they open and close just fine. It's that they have to be lined up properly. Just clarifying that because I'm going through the comments here. I've seen multiple of the same ones. We get a, a lot of views on that video, so that's pretty cool. Glad that you guys liked that. I hope you guys liked it. Give me a thumbs up on this one if you like this one. I guess we got to get going so you can watch it. Ready to rock and roll. The truck is ready. My logbook is ready. I'm ready. Home is at the end of the road today. And you know what that means. Usually I run about 62 miles an hour. But home is at the end of the drive today. So today I think we're gonna bump her up to 65. It's a special day. 65 all the way home. I got 767 kilometers left to go, just under 500 miles. Honestly, I don't know if I'm gonna make it home tonight yet. I'm trying to surprise my wife and get home today. She's expecting me home tomorrow. And quite honestly, that's when it looks like I'm gonna make it. I, I don't think I'm gonna make it home with enough time because I've been on nights this whole this whole week and it might be a little late. That's why we're gonna bump her up to 65 and uh, see if that helps, see if we can get home a little earlier. Uh, I can't go home when it's too late. Our dogs go crazy, wakes our, wakes our kid up. And if he's already sleeping and she's already in bed, there's no point in getting the whole house just up in a roar because the dogs go crazy when I come home uh, and wake everybody up. I may as well just sleep in the truck and go home first thing in the morning when everybody's getting up at like 7.30 or 8 or whenever I get there. Uh, this truck's going into the service uh, service shop tomorrow. Uh, it's getting a, uh, a full service done. And I'm also getting my frame inspected. Um, planning on uh, sandblasting the whole thing eventually very soon getting it repainted I've measured out my uh, my truck length pulling a trailer in Canada I'm allowed to be at a maximum of 75 and a half feet approximately uh, from front of my bumper to the rear of the trailer bumper and the trailers that I'm pulling I'm sitting at about 72 feet so I have an issue three feet that I could utilize if I want to so I'm gonna price out a little bit of a frame extension, about 24 inches. We'll see. Gotta measure everything out, make sure everything is good. And uh, see what I'm looking at for that. I mean, I, I really don't wanna do the frame now. I was thinking of doing the frame like in two years, in like 2026. Like this was a long-term plan. But the paint has been coming off. There's like no paint left on my frame uh, behind my cab. So I'd at least like to get something on that to protect it from rusting further. I don't want it to get uh, out of control, right? I want to maintain it and keep it where it's at right now so that when I do the big job, get it all done nice, make it look all brand new again, that uh, the truck will make it till then, right? I don't want it to uh, get too out of hand. It's an old truck. This truck has over 3 million kilometers on it. It's got almost 2 million miles. And uh, the engine doesn't have nearly that on it, but I plan on having this truck on the road for years and years yet, as long as I can. So we're gonna see how high we can get it. Maybe we can get it to 5 million miles. What's the highest mileage you've ever heard on a highway tractor before? This is a question for you drivers out there. I've heard of trucks going over 4 million miles. A guy we work with uh, he had a truck that went over 4 million miles. Original diffs, original trans, everything. For the most part, engine was rebuilt a few times, but original diffs. If you take care of them, they'll go and they'll go and they'll go. But if you neglect them, they'll go and they'll go and they'll go the other way, away from you. <laughs> so getting my frame inspected so that I can stay on top of the maintenance, I go above and beyond with this truck to make sure it's above the levels of compliance. So I'm gonna keep it that way. All right, old blue is raring to go. Well, I just came from Texas. I should say Old Blue's fixing to get out there. Yeah, it's gonna verify my trailer is attached. Absolutely it is. And the brakes work. And they release. 
Wonderful. Now the day can begin. Oh, it feels good. Yep. Getting going. Like I was saying, we've been on a night schedule this whole trip, so we'll be driving into the night. That's why I'm not sure if I'll be able to get home in time tonight yet, but we're gonna do our best, so we're not gonna stop for anything unnecessary. I do have to stop for fuel once, uh, up here in North Dakota, either in Fargo or Grand Forks, whoever's got the cheaper juice. Probably Fargo. But then again, you know, Grand Forks, it's usually like a cent or two more per gallon. I don't know, we'll see what happens. But I do need to stop for fuel yet, and that's the only stop I plan to make. I can make it to the Canadian border before my eight hours of driving are up, or before my eight hours are up, so I shouldn't have to stop for a half hour break before I get to Canada. We'll save that. I made sure I drove long enough last night that I wouldn't have to stop for my half hour today. So I am uh, six and a half to seven hours from the border. It should work just perfect. Interstate 29 North, take me home. North Dakota. Last time we were here, we could only use those pumps and they were redoing these ones. They had this all dug up, remember? Now they're digging up those ones. We can use these ones. It has been a steady, steady drive all the way up here, just stopping for a bathroom break or two. Go, go, go. This is the longest stop I'll have. I gotta wait to fuel here. One guy's not even fueling. He's uh, just parked in the pumps. Oh, there he comes. Oh, he was inside. He's got a bag of groceries. Well, oh, now he's gonna fuel. Now he's gonna, okay. Good thing you went and got your groceries first. Okay. So this is gonna be quite a large fuel. That's okay. Uh, the price here in Grand Forks was only seven tenths of a cent more expensive than down in Fargo. This way I feel closer to home. I park tonight with my tanks fuller. And then when I get going next week, maybe I'll be just in Canada, I don't know. But at least then I've got more uh, cheap juice than I would have had I fueled at Fargo. Does that make sense? So as soon as this guy gets out of my way, I'll pull up, fuel up.
kill and go. done the parking lot here too. Usually right in front of here is all packed full of trucks. And the further back. Did they make the lot bigger? I like the way this looks better. This opens it up a lot. There's probably still parking spots there but it's under the snow and no one parked there. I don't know. I like it better with everyone back there. That's way more organized and that'd be way easier to get into those spots. We're back at the Canadian border, all the way from the Mexican border. Three days. Three days of driving. At this border, we're actually going to cross. We're going to go back home. And maybe one day we can do it again. I'm gonna make it home. Be a little late, it'll be between 10 and 10.30, but I'm getting home tonight. Just gotta drop this trailer somewhere in the loaded lineup. Drop my paperwork off here at the office on the way out. Skedaddle on home. Gonna get this gate to open. Swing my keys towards it. Come on. There it is. Come on. Open. It's me. Come on. Come on. It's me. You know me. Let me in. There you go. Well, the weather is a little different here than it was at the other border. This feels more familiar. Supposed to get in snow today and tomorrow. So a good thing I got home tonight. That's not really the reason, but it's a bonus to pushing hard to get home tonight. Be home over the weekend while it snows and hopefully by next week it'll have cleared up. Oh boy, the loaded lineup looks pretty full. See what's available back here. That lineup in front of us is the loaded lineup. The one that we're passing by right now, only empty trailers can park there because there's a concrete, a line of concrete under the trailer legs of these. I don't think we'd have to worry about them sinking into the ground at this time of year, but you never know. It's not that cold. It's unseasonably warm right now. Thank God for the El Nino, right? Ah, I think this is my spot right here on the other side of this black roll type. That's the spot.
fill my mailbox, and then there's nothing between us and home.